in for a special, special, special treat. Uh, I am so looking forward to uh, sharing together and entering into a time of praise and worship and laughing together and being encouraged and inspired. Uh, Mr. Brian Hansen, a longtime college friend of ours. Uh, in fact, actually, Becky was saying earlier she met Brian before college uh, when he was still, he was, he's just a, a little bit older than us. And uh, so we'll introduce him in, here in a few moments, uh, but uh, I'm glad that you're here this evening. I uh, appreciate you being this morning. Just a couple of um, reports. Let's see what I was, I forgot what I was going to report on, so I'll have to think on it and tell you later because I've forgotten it. That train left the station without me. Uh, so it's good to have you here, and we're going to start out with a couple of congregational songs and have then a children's uh, uh, sermon in the sack. So Nathan, take it away. Good evening. Good to see you all. Hey, we're going uh, old school, so no words on the screen. Just pull out that hymnal. The hymnal is the blue book in front of you in the pew. First song we're going to do here is number 371, Heaven Came Down. Number 383, Satisfied. Children, you're invited to come down at this time and meet Pastor Kim for Sermon in the Sack.
friend tonight doing sermon in the sack with us. Austin Halter's gonna has some surprises in the sack, and we're gonna see if we can figure out what his Bible story is. Can you bring us out one of your clues? No peeking, Pastor Brett. He's over there peeking. All right, we've got, what do you think this is? A robe. What do you wear a robe for? What do you think? I have to take a bath. Is the story about someone having a bath? Nope. Okay, so we're going to assume that it's a robe, like maybe somebody in the Bible wore. Okay. We all agree with that? Okay. Jesus wore a robe, right? But in the Bible time, they didn't have the same clothes we have, did they? They wore robes and different kinds of headgear and stuff than we wore. And sandals. Yeah, they didn't have boots like you guys. Oh, I bet they're jealous. All right, what other things do we have in the... I don't know, this probably isn't a big enough clue for us to guess it, since most of the people in the Bible wore a, a robe. A bellow. He knew I was tired tonight. So, so someone taking a nap or sleeping? No. Okay, what al- other ideas do you have for a pillow and for a robe? Okay. Resting? About somebody resting? Okay. Paralyzed man that had to come down through the roof? No. Okay. Joseph in the coat of many colors? About Joseph? Okay. Did did you have anything else in your bag? Good guess. Got some kids that know their Bible stories. Okay. Oh, I bet I know what this part, this part goes with the pillow, right? Do you remember about his dreams? Do you have anything else? Let's see, what should we start? This this part come first, you think? This part, then this part, and then it ends up that part? All right. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Okay. Oh, money. All right. Yep, that's right. We got it in order right. You got a lot of stuff to help us tell the story. Okay, what can you tell us about this robe? What happened with this robe in the story? This man wore a robe. Remember the man's name? He wore a robe of many colors. Joseph, how did that make his family, his brothers, feel? Jealous. Jealous. Did did they get nice robes like this? Just him? Oh, my goodness, there are 12 boys in that family, is that right? And there are 10 older than him, and none of the older brothers got one of these? Oh, they were jealous, and they wanted to kill Joseph? Mm, Because he got this cool robe, and he's kind of treated special, more special than the rest of them. Okay, and then what else happened? Oh, no, he had a dream. He had a dream. Do you remember what happened in the dream? He dreamed that his brothers' hair bells bowed down to him. His hair bells. Right, his brothers' shafts bowed, bowed down to him and to his shafts, right? And there was another part of that dream. Do you remember the other part of it? It had something to do with something in the sky? No. About this, Okay. And that, yeah, so he had two dreams, both of them that had to do with his brother's items bowing down to his item. And his brother's going, what? You're the youngest one out of us. We're not going to worship you. We're not going to follow you. Because in the Bible times, the oldest one was the leader in the family, right? Okay, then what happened? Oh, um, uh, they threw him in a well and took his coat off and ripped it up and burned it to his dad and said he got eaten by a wild animal. Oh, they were that mad, they were that angry with him that he was treated special, that they took him and they threw him in a well and ripped up his coat and tried to trick the dad and told, told the dad that he had been eaten by a wild animal. But what really happened to him? Um, uh, God was with him. God was with him. And, yeah, they put blood from the goat on it 
and try to make it look like it was his blood anyway. Yeah, they're setting it up for cri- a real crime scene right there. And what then what else happened? So what happened? The brothers were plotting to kill him and... And sold him for slavery. They did. They sold their own brother for some money and made him a slave. And they took, took him to another country, to Egypt. Now, what do we know about that? What does this story tell us? What can we learn from this story? you guys think? Here we got a person that was treated special, had dreams, and his dreams came true at the very end, and his brothers were jealous of him and threw him in a well and then ended up selling him as a slave. Okay, when God's with us, he watches over us and takes care of us, didn't he? He took care of Joseph when he was in the well, and he took care of him when he sold as a slave, and God saw Joseph's heart that God, that Joseph loved him, and he put it, made him into being one of the top rulers in Egypt, and he saved a lot of people's lives, didn't he? God took a bad situation and turned it into something good. Very good, Austin. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer tonight together, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for your love and the way you watch over us in good times in bad times we pray that we'll learn to trust you in every situation and know that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives help us Jesus to trust you and love you and serve you with our whole heart in Jesus name Thank you, Pastor Kim and kids. Uh, thank you for sharing and being a part. I, I wish that every of the every one of the kids were mic so that you could hear them respond. I know that it's uh, you, it's their voices are pretty soft, uh, but it's fun to watch and listen to them respond. And it's exciting to see how they are learning the stories of the Word of God. Well, tonight uh, we introduce to you Mr. Brian Hansen. Uh, he is from Nashville, Tennessee. He is a um, a variety of a concert. Pianist, That's right. with a com- as a comedian, That's right. that uh, is a grandpa, yeah. seven months old, yeah. Yeah. and uh, our friend. Yes. And you're going to enjoy the evening. May the Lord bless you, Brian. Take Thank it away. You so much, appreciate it. Well, good evening. Well, let's try it one more time. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, that's nice. It is so good to be with you tonight. Good to be in Mustang, Oklahoma. Bless your heart. Thank you for coming out. I always like to ask this uh, as we're starting off here. How many of you have seen me before or this is your first time to see us? Could I see your hands? Well, I see everybody. Well, good. I appreciate that. We uh, do a lot of these concerts all around the place, and it worked out to come here. I called Terry a, a short while ago, and this worked out. What a joy to see you guys tonight. 
I re- and that kids say, you're right, Terry. I was down and listening to these little kids talk. That was so cute. Bless their hearts. Well, it is good, like I said, to be in Mustang. Um, this is a little different concert than maybe what you're used to. Okay, this is how we run our, run our thing. This is not me up here and you out there. This is us, okay? I want you to sing with me, all right? You're going to know everything I'm going to do, so I want you to sing with me. I want you to clap. I want you to laugh and just participate for about n- the next 50 minutes or so. Let's just enjoy the presence of the Lord. Does that sound okay? All right, all right. All right, well, we're going to start off here. We have a little kid theme here, sir, like here at the start, and, and uh, continue that. When I was growing up, about two years old, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'd be scared. Oh, I'd have a bad dream or something. And I'd ask my mom to come in and, and sing me back to sleep. And I'd always ask for this song. Now, this is not a lullaby. Don't go to sleep on me, anything like that. But it's just a great old song of the faith. And as we're starting off on our part of the pro- program tonight, I want to do this. Would you bring the words up here and let's sing it together. Holy, holy, holy. Sing it with me. Holy, holy. Thank you for the privilege of being here in Mustang, Oklahoma tonight. Father God, thank you for each and every soul that's come out, and I just pray a special blessing on each and every one. Jesus, when a group of people like this get together, there's always folks there that are sitting on top of the world, and everything's going great in their life, and they're praising your name, and we rejoice with them. But Jesus, there's probably folks here tonight with some heavy burdens, and especially for them, would you go to them? Would you wrap your beloved arms around them? Would you let them know that you're still in charge of this crazy old thing we call life? And would you meet needs tonight? Be their physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs. Would you work in each and every situation? And Jesus, if there is anybody here tonight that doesn't know you as their Savior, I pray that tonight will be their night. They open up their heart to you, invite you in as Savior Lord. The old song says that he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. Those are the words we want to hear tonight. Jesus, we sent your presence with us already. Would you continue with us? For we pray in the wonderful, the beautiful, the majestic name of Jesus, and all God's good people said, amen. Well, it is good to be in Mustang, Oklahoma. Brian Hanson all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. This is what we do for a living, gospel piano concerts. And I don't mean to be repetitious, but I don't get to Oklahoma that often, and this is just great. It is good to see a lot of friends here tonight. I'm not going to say old friends. I have a lot of friends here tonight, and it's just, this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Uh, a lot of you don't know me, so real quick little thumbnail sketch. I am married. My wife's name is Cheryl. This last May 21st, I just can't believe this, we celebrated. 30 years of being married this year. You clap for that one. There you go. 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. She told me the other day it's been 10 of the happiest years of her life. I don't know. It sort of worries me. But anyway, she a lovely lady. And then we got three kids. Our oldest is Mandy. She's 25. Lives in East Nashville. And got married two years ago to a guy named Kyle. I've got the greatest son-in-law in the world. I'd say this kid is six foot five. He's skinny as a rail, 
If he stands sideways and sticks out his tongue, he looks like a zipper. But anyway, but I love him. He's a graphics artist by trade. So he does all this cool stuff on computer and uh, works for the area-wide YMCA there in Nashville and just a fabulous kid. Well, they've been married two years, you know, still on this honeymoon and everything. And about seven months ago, they gave me the greatest present I've ever had in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Lily Beloved. I th there she is. All righty. Yeah. I tell you what, and, and that's life size. She's a large child. But anyway, yeah. Lily Beloved. Lily Beloved. Isn't that a gorgeous name? Yeah. Odd name for a boy. But anyway, <laughs> no, she's a little girl, and she just got grandpa wrapped all the way around her little finger. So you can say goodbye to Lily now. Okay, that's fine. And then our, uh, our middle one is Matt. He is 22, was down in Tampa Bay for a long time, uh, that area. We used to live down there. He moved up to Chattanooga rec recently, and now he's there. He's a phenomenal guitar player. I live in Nashville. I see and I hear the best. And, folks, I do believe he's one of them. I'm so proud of him. And then our youngest is Chrissy. She is 19, and her claim to fame is she does many things, but she is a competition Irish dancer. You know the river dance stuff where keep their arms all straight and their feet are just going crazy. You know, well she goes all over the place. She a year ago, a, a year ago January, she and my wife went all the way to Ireland and she competed in Ireland. And then a year ago April, she and my wife went all the way to Scotland and she competed in Scotland. And I stayed home and paid for every bit of it. So anyway, no, that's not a complaint. That's not, I got, just you might remember that love offering. But anyway, well, I didn't come to talk to death. Can't play for you. We're going to do something for everybody tonight. But I've got to be true to form. Now, folks, I grew up on more of the old uh, southern gospel style of music. Any of you watching those Gaither homecomings on TV? You know that? Okay, yeah, yeah, several of you. Well, I want to play two, uh, one or two of these. I just love that stuff with, you know, the going so fast and everything. This is a great old song, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. Now, I brought the band with me. They're itching to play for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to clap along, if you want to sing, have a big time, whatever, hope you enjoy it. Since Jesus Came Into My Heart, and it goes like this. All right. that. I wish I was out there enjoying this with you. But anyway, what a great song, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. 
Folks, we don't have to live in defeat. We don't have to live in discouragement. But we can live with the presence of Jesus in our heart and in our life. And that's good news tonight. I want to do a song for you that, um, well, let, let me just say this. Let me say this. The older I get, the more I realize one thing. Everybody you know at one time or another in this life is going to disappoint you. That's just sort of how life works. But ladies and gentlemen, our God will never disappoint you. And do you know why? Great is his faithfulness. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus, we thank you that tonight you are Lord of our life. We 
thank you that you are Lord of this old universe. And we pray that you continue with us. Jesus, thank you for the sweet spirit we sense here tonight. Would you continue to open our hearts to you? Whatever you want to have happen tonight, may it, may it happen. We just want to obey you totally. We love you supremely. We pray in your name. You probably remember this one. your heart be troubled his tender words I hear and resting on his goodness I lose my doubts and fears though eyes on the sparrow and I know he watches me sing it again and I sing it eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Folks, we serve an awesome God, and no matter what you might be going through tonight, you might be going through times that you just think, I literally don't know how I'm going to face Monday morning. My life is so tough. Ladies and gentlemen, if we can just keep in the forefront of our minds and hearts, if our God cares that much about a little bitty bird, how much more does he love? And so when the old enemy of our soul comes around and tries to get us discouraged and defeated, and he will, that's his job. If you can just remember, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know, I know he watches me. That's where the victory comes, folks. Praise the Lord. I want to do a song for you that uh, this next song I dearly love. And um, it's written by a gentleman that was just awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award with the Grammys. And that's a big deal. It only happens once in a lifetime. But anyway, he, he uh, was brought in along with Julie Andrews and several other uh, prominent entertainers. It's about time because the old boy is 102 years old. Yeah. And here's his name, George Beverly Shea. You've probably heard of him. He sang with the Billy Graham Crusade for years and years and years. 
well, I want to do one of his songs. I, I'd rather have Jesus. And then maybe at the end of it, we can all sing it or something. But you know, when he was starting off back in the 40s, late 40s, he was being groomed as the next big deal. You know, back then it was the radio singer. You know, that was the big deal. Nowadays, we've got American Idol. We've got So You Think You Can Sing, you know, and all these shows. But back then, it was the radio singer. And they were going to make him the next Sinatra, the next Tony Bennett, whatever. But he just felt like God wanted to do a little something different with his life. And so instead of going that route, he went with a young Billy Graham. And for about the next 50 years, they just circled the globe telling people about Jesus. Does that mean if you go God's way, everybody's going to know your name, you're going to travel a lot and whatever? No, of course not. But what it does mean is our God loves us. And, he's, and he knows us. He created us. And if we'll just surrender to him, the miraculous can happen. This is a great song. And I want you to soak in this for about three minutes. Toward the end, maybe we'll sing it. I'd rather have Jesus. <laughs>
sing that with me. Then be the king of a vast domain, or be held in sin's dread sweat. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. To shift gears a little bit. Um, uh, next song I want to do for you. I ask this question in every concert, and I really get the same response every time. And I think it's going to be just fine tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody here tonight like to hear a little country music? Could I see your hands? Anybody at all? Okay, good. All right, yeah. This next song is so country. It's just going to slap you upside the head. Now, this has got the steel guitars whining all over the place. All right. I'm going to do the old Floyd Kramer style of piano, the teardrop piano. The, the last date stuff. All right. We'll sit back and relax for three minutes to the most beautiful music this side of heaven. I know you're going to enjoy it. Bill Gaither's classic, He Touched Me. Boys play it for me.
Oh, I love play like that. Little Jerry Lee there, a little Mickey, whoever. You know, it, it, but what a great, what a great song. He touched me, he made me whole. Jesus can do that for you. He can take your life and change it and rearrange it and do marvelous things if we'll just give him a chance. But we have to accept him into our lives, but once we do, the joy, the peace, the happiness makes it oh so wonderful. Praise the Lord. I had a request tonight. But I'm going to sing some more anyway. And I've got a great song. Thank you very much. I have a wonderful song. It's time in the program for ballad. And so I want to do a beautiful ballad for you tonight. This song is that they say nowadays you're supposed to have relevant material in your program. All right. Well, this song is so relevant. This song is so relevant. It could have happened this morning in a church somewhere. It could have happened this morning. So a beautiful, tender ballad. We hope you enjoy it. And it goes like this. <clears throat> Sunday one time, going to church, I was running behind. The day just before, I'd worked mighty hard, uh, changing a flat on my car in the yard. Uh, I left off a lug nut, one here and one there, thought it wouldn't matter, it was only the spare. But it came loose as I hurried along. There in the wreckage, I wrote this song. You picked a fine time to leave me loose wheel. Going to church and speeding downhill. Well, I was making good time. Wasn't that beautiful? Just brings a tear to your ear. You know what I mean? <laughs> you guys are great. Bless your hearts. You laugh and you clap and you sing and you participate. And it ain't this way everywhere. Some crowds. We do a lot of these concerts. Some crowds. They just sit there and look at you like this. They say, what's he going to do next? And is there coffee afterwards? So, you know, so I really, I do appreciate your response. I really do. I got to take just a little break. We, uh, we are getting ready. I just can't wait. We're getting ready for our Christmas tour. This will be the fifth year we've gone out on a Christmas tour. And every year it just gets more fun. And, and it's just, it, it, it's wonderful. But uh, the first year we did it, the first, anyway, the first year we did it, mainly we were up in the Midwest. Okay. But I took a, two, a couple of dates, and I flew down to Florida. Well, second night down in Florida, Safety Harbor, Florida, Thursday evening. After the concert, this middle-aged lady comes walking down the aisle. She wants to talk to me. And she starts to tell me how that her 85-year-old mother had just gone out on a date with a 92-year-old man. The story goes, the mom comes home, and the daughter said, well, how would everything go? The mom said, well, had to slap his face four times. She said, did he get a little fresh? She said, no, I thought he was dead. But anyway, <laughs> isn't that a nice little story? I like That's sort of a Christmas story. Uh, <laughs> I digress further. Uh, I've been doing this a long time. Oh, folks, I tell you, about 1972, I can't believe it, almost 40 years, that when I was in high school, I started going around and doing some shows, and you know, like at the Rotary Club, or the Ladies' Tea Auxiliary, the Daughters of the American Revolution, or something, you know, and just uh, love to play, love to tell them about Jesus, make them laugh a little bit, you know, have a big time. And over the years, we've done this full-time, part-time, no time, but, you know, it's, it, for the last five years, we've really hit it up hard. But never would I have thought in 1972 
almost 40 years ago, that someday I would have a 48-pound piano that I can take around with me. They call a digital piano. They hadn't even thought of that concept back in the 70s, early 70s. You know, now I can take a grand piano sound everywhere I go, and it's just, it's wonderful to have. You know, I carry it in with me, you know. Or like these speakers here, you know, for the most part, we're running off of my stuff tonight. And, and uh, we used to have to have all this stuff, and now we've got, you know, a little cabinet, and the amplifiers built into it, and they don't weigh a whole lot, and it's just wonderful. Or like this little tin box back here, they call a laptop computer. I mean... This plays all my music back here. And, and back in the 70s, all we had to play music on was eight tracks. Does anybody remember eight tracks? I'm just curious. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm still in counseling. But anyway, <laughs> some of you kids, if you, you just ask, if you don't know what it is, ask Grandpa what an eight track is, and he'll just start to cry. You know, they just didn't work real good. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I really embrace all the new technology that's out there. I really love it. And I try to keep up as best I can. But I found something about two years ago that has just transformed my life. And I want to share it with you tonight. It's this little box right here with little red lights on it. I don't know if you can see this or not. But this thing has just turned my life around. And I want to show you how it works. And then I'm going to do a real old-timey song for, for it uh, with using it that I think you'll enjoy. But i got to do this first. And you'll understand why. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. That's just a good old country song. Okay, but now, ladies and gentlemen, with a touch of one button, one button, I can now do this. One. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sun shine away. is incorporated into a little song. Now, this song was written about 1927, and it was uh, the Carter family's theme song. Anybody remember the Carter family from years ago? All right. Uh, this song was their, uh, their signature tune. It talks about keeping on the sunny side of life. You know, with all the heartache and trouble and struggle and grief in this world, a song like this is more apropos today than it was almost 90-some years ago. So I want to sing it for you, then I'm going to bring the family in on the chorus. We hope you enjoy it. And it goes like this. There's a dark and a troubled side of life. There's a bright and a sunny side, too. Sunny side, you also may be Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It'll help us every day, it will brighten all the way. If you'll keep on the sunny side of life, let us greet with a song of hope each day. Though the moments be cloudy or fair. Trust in our Savior always, who keepeth everyone in his care. Come on. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It'll help us every day, it will brighten all the way. If you'll keep on the sunny side of life, if you'll keep on the sunny side of life, if you'll keep on the sunny side of life. There we go. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this thing does so, I wish I had time. It does, I never thought I'd have background singers. I didn't have to pay or feed. You know, so it's wonderful. But it does so many other things. I wish I had time, but I don't. But it, it does do one other little thing. I'd love to work this into a song. Haven't found the song yet. Maybe y'all could help me. But I'd love to do something like this, right like this. 
Elvira. So, I think that'd be appropriate. But any, anyway, we'll do a little Oak Ridge thing. Uh, <laughs> you guys, bless your heart. I appreciate your smiles and your claps and everything tonight. Bless your heart. Real quick, I don't have a lot of time. Would there be a request or two? Uh, I love doing requests. If you've got a favorite old gospel song or favorite hymn that you'd like me to play for you, then what's that? Bluegrass. All righty, he wants some bluegrass. All righty. <laughs> all right, how about I'll fly away with a little, little, little kind of treatment like that? Would that be okay? All right, all right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Somebody else, one more, one more. What's that? Green grass. <laughs> the old hometown looks the same as I step down from the train. There to meet me was my mother. And my father, that's about all I'm going to do that one, sorry. That's the green, green grass of home. Y'all stay around later and I'll finish that song for you. I, I cry every time I sing that, it's so pretty. Well, anyway, what, what, one more request, one more request. Anybody else? Pardon me, dear? Just a closer walk with thee. I think we can do that. that that'll close down requests. That's a good, good song. Just a closer walk with thee. <laughs>
that's a beautiful song. I love that song. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do one more. We're going to take a little break, and pastor's going to come, and he'll do the love offering, and then we'll come back with, like, one more song. So these are not equal packages. We're going to get you out of here in real good time. This has been so much fun, and I, I just, I love playing for you. I want to do, want to do this song. You all know this one. If there's a number one hymn, it's this one. If there's a song that just says it all, it's this one. And so sing along if you want. But the, listen to the beautiful and worship the grand old classic, How Great Thou Art. Here we go. How to uh, be generous tonight and give uh, a gracious uh, love offering and appreciation of Brian coming and sharing with us. If you uh, want to make out a check, make it out to the church and we will give him one check. Uh, if you, uh, you can put on your check in the memo, uh, Brian or Han Brian Hansen or piano, or you can leave it blank and uh, it will all go to Brian tonight. So if it's your tithe check you're putting in, make sure you write tithe on it. Otherwise, everything's going to uh, Brian this evening or Faith Promise or building. And uh, we appreciate uh, your faithfulness and giving. While you're getting your checkbooks ready and doing all that, let me just remind you next Sunday morning is going to be a special time. Uh, it is, uh, we are going to uh, honor our veterans during our morning worship service. want to encourage you to invite your neighbors and your friends. We will have a great time of praise and worship. We will have a wonderful time of prayer. 
And we're also, as we uh, honor our vets, we're then going to hear uh, Speaker, uh, State Senator, Retired Lieutenant Colonel, all those names, Steve Russell. He's going to be sharing uh, a little bit about his experience and his the, the presence of God with him as he um, uh, served in the uh, in in the armed forces, but also sharing his faith. And so I hope that you will let your neighbors and friends, coworkers, know about it. And we have a great crowd on next Sunday morning. Uh, ushers come forward, and we will receive this offering this evening. And uh, we're excited that Mrs. Edith Johnson is here with us tonight. It's good to have Edith back, and she's going to pray for this offering this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the music that you put in our hearts when we give our hearts to you. We rejoice tonight in knowing you. I pray that you would bless this offering and bless the recipient of it, Brother Brian. I pray that you bless this church and people and pastor. Keep us close to you. Keep us being faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's a little taste of Christmas. Christmas is less than th two months away now. Can you believe it? I just can't believe it. Hey, you know, I'm here tonight to help you out. You know, you may have that that, that person on your Christmas uh, gift list, and they, you have no idea what they are. You know, Aunt Mary or Uncle Fred or whoever, ladies and gentlemen, I solved that problem tonight. May I introduce our Brian Hansen Christmas that I just played angels off of? Did this last year right before the tour. 
and it's got ten wonderful Christmas songs on a piano with beautiful backup. Songs like Angels We've Heard on High, I'll Be Home for Christmas. It came upon the midnight clear, joy to the world, Christmas time is here, little Charlie Brown thing. Uh, go tell it all about the Christmas song, Christmas is here, um, the German Christmas carol, still still still. Proper pronunciation is still still still. That's really hard to do with these new teeth, but anyway, so, and then Silver Bells and Silent Night, so gorgeous, gorgeous CD, beautiful, uh, beautiful songs. Then um, I've got a CD here that's just simply called Brian Hansen. Uh, this is, this one here is totally different than anything I've done for you. And you may say, well, why is this CD so totally different? The church I was at while I recorded this CD was a large church down in Florida. I was their keyboardist for four and a half years. And it was their tradition that every Sunday they would take communion. Well, during that time, I'd just sit there at the piano and I'd ask the Lord to give me something and just make up stuff on the spot. And the people loved it, the pastor loved it, they wanted me to do a CD and stuff. So a couple days before the recording, he picked out 15 verses from the book of Psalms. Like the first one here is Psalm 40, verse 1. The morning of the recording, I had this big old seven-foot Yamaha grand piano. I laid my Bible there in the music rack, read that first verse to myself, asked the Lord to give me something, and turned on the recording and started playing. And I did 15 of them in 12 hours. I've never done it like that before or since. If you like beautiful, original solo piano work, you'll love this CD. Some of it peaceful, some of it dramatic, but all beautiful. A little on the artsy side, but like I said, a little on the artistic side as well as beautiful. But then I've got a couple uh, traditional CDs. This is called Blessed uh, Piano with nice backup background singers. Songs like When They Ring Those Golden Bells for You and Me. And Can It Be, Charles Wesley song. Uh, Come and Dine, The Old Rugged Cross, There is a River. Beautiful CD, piano with, with beautiful backup and background singers. This one is, is simply called The All-Time Favorites, Volume 1. Once again, this is piano with nice backup, background singers. Songs like How Great Thou Art, Victory in Jesus, It Is Well With My Soul, uh, In the Garden, gorgeous CD. And then a little dream come true for, you know, when I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little secret about my life. When I was eight years old, all my friends back there in the early 60s were listening to the Beatles, were listening to the Rolling Stones. And I was home every Saturday night watching Lawrence Welk. And it affected me. And so, I, but I've always enjoyed that kind of music. And so I wanted to do a CD with sort of the, you know, that, that pop kind of music. You know, the Roger Williams stuff that just sort of goes all over the place with the big backing track and everything. Well, the dream came true. I mean, I introduced the Brian Hansen show. Uh, this was just out about a month ago. And it's, it's my dream project. It's got ten great songs, unforgettable, misty, deep purple, autumn leaves, the way you look tonight. Till there was you yesterday, moon river, the shadow of your smile and stars. And so ten great songs, piano with beautiful backup. And any of these CDs or all of them make great Christmas gifts or, or just for the home or for the car or whatever. Um, our table is right out there as you're going out the door. They're $12 a piece. We're glad to take check or cash, real estate or jewelry. So come by and see us. And uh, no, seriously, check or cash, or we can take uh, all the different uh, cards, though, the credit cards. We can do that now. So uh, come by and see us. It sure helps us out, and I know it'll help you out. So uh, thank you. One other little piece of house, uh, housekeeping here before I play the last song. Um, I, you know, as your life goes along, you meet many people situations and I just I, this guy here tonight has, has taught me that you can love the academics of life and you can love the whole life of God and go to church and I, I, I got to talk to him about that here today and mention that he was one of my teachers many years ago he's about 150 years old by the way but anyway <laughs> I'm getting up there too but he looks great he looks great but seriously Chris thank you God bless you you mean a lot to me One more song, Song of Hope. We live in a world that's just at, at times as big as this one right here, and maybe more than that, that ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the only way to heaven. And he can give hope to your heart right now. Maybe you're struggling with it today, and you're just wanting to give up. But if you chill tonight and just grasp a hold of that thought that Jesus is the only way, and he has the answer to every one of your questions, 
you glad that Brian came our way? Uh, thank you again, Brian, for sharing your talents and God's gift that he's given to you with us. And would you bow your heads with me? Father, we come to a time now that we just want to say thank you for this day. It's been an awesome day to be in your house, to be with your people, to uh, experience your presence in many different ways. Lord, now would you go with us as we go out into our work week, as we go to our classrooms, as we go into our neighborhood, and may we be your light. May we share your love. And may we extend your grace to a hurting world. Thank you again for Brian. We ask your blessing upon him, his ministry, his family as he travels. And may you continue to use him to build your kingdom. We love you tonight. Thank you for loving us. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks for being here with us tonight. And uh, stop by the table if you'd like some of that music to take home with you. Brian, before oh, we're, he's already out there. Uh, so, well, I was going to ask about uh, for our folks on video, on live streaming, how they can get that. Send us an email, and uh, we'll figure out how to do it. Thanks. <laughs>